There is an extraordinary cat in this forest. The ultimate predator, a silent and often invisible killer. Every leopard has unique markings, but this one has a small round spot to the right of her nose between the two solid whisker lines. This will always distinguish her from the others. This is the story of Lacedema, a jewel of the forest, who reflects in the shine of her eyes all the experiences of a life running a gauntlet of death from her very first day. Her story through the eye of the leopard. This is her place. These flooded marshlands of a place called Mombo in Botswana's Okavango Delta. It is Africa's Garden of Eden, with fertile floodplains filled with nutrients and greenery. It is the very best leopard territory you can imagine. And this is where Lachedema must carve out a place for herself, defend her space, and disappear in the mosaic of the swamp and bush. There is another leopard here, resting comfortably in the warm embrace of an ancient baobab tree. Leopards have climbed this same tree for over 500 years, generation after generation, but now this leopard is queen here. And this is Lacedema's mother, a strong-willed leopardess that tolerates no intruders in her piece of Africa. None, that is, but this male. He asks no permission. He's the dominant leopard from the burnt ebony tree to the south, a huge beast who prowls through her territory, and those of six other females as well. He is a scar-faced survivor, hunter of at least 36 species in his range. Few are immune from his special talents. <laughs> Variety is the key to his success. Specialist hunters die when their prey dies out, but leopards simply switch to their next victim. As a result, leopards stalk the forests from the tip of Africa to the eastern edge of Asia, from coasts to mountaintops, the most prolific great cat on Earth. It all started for this cub with the unique spot three years ago to the day. and explosive affair, with snarling exposed teeth and fur flying. When leopards mate, their intensity shudders through the forest. The couple shun food for a week and mate almost continuously. <laughs> And then, quite suddenly, they part company for months, even years. Mm. 
Lachedema is the local Setswana name for the lightning that rolls in at that time of the year. It means light from the sky or above. Three months later, the new dominant male from the burnt ebony tree became a father. Lachedema was born. She first emerged into the sunlight at eight days, senses alive, bristling with interest. Her eyes locked on something wonderful and enticing straight away. She ventured out like an explorer. From that day on, the forest would be changed. Every leopard needs to learn quickly how to climb with confidence to master heights for hunting and to escape danger. It takes time. And from the very beginning, a cub must draw on that deep inner instinct as a predator to stalk, hunt and kill. For the survivors, it is hardwired. The first few days will always determine their odds. Lacadema's first attack was a good start. Her intense focus on the kill, important. Her inherited technique, almost perfect, but she lacked something vital. She was still too innocent to understand the obvious signs of danger. mother knew them intimately. They have attacked before. Twice they killed her cubs. Daily they dog her every move, waiting for yet another macabre free meal. she dropped her guard, they had swooped down. Now, even though she was vicious in her defense, they'd been found, the den revealed. It would just be a matter of time before they came back. All her hopes were now invested in this latest cub. Leopard's first instinct is to hide and stay hidden. Invisibility is their best weapon and best defense. So when the news of their den rippled through the forest that day, the mother knew it was time to move on. It would be the first of many moves for the young Lachadima. Each time, the cub would go into a typical cat freeze the instant her mother's jaws clamped gently round her neck. It was her earliest instinct. To feed them both, her mother needed to hunt. To hunt, she had to leave her cub vulnerable to the things that lurk in the darkness and prey on the innocent. Already little Lachadima knew one voice in the frightening cacophony of the dawn chorus, her mother's secret message to her that she was coming home. But she heard other calls as well. Nearby the den, there had been growls and cries of agony in the night. Some hapless leopard, an interloper himself, had been caught out in the open. A fatal error in lion country.
fate had saved Lachadima. The lions on a direct route to her den were distracted by some more pressing adventure. Each dawn was a desperate mission to find her way back to her cub undetected. For a cat that prefers to live like a ghost, running a gauntlet of detection demands almost military stealth and planning. The local baboon troop is the hardest to avoid. Over the years, the troop has grown from a few dozen to nearly a hundred members. They know their local leopard and always keep a wary eye scanning the forest floor for any sign of her. So each and every return to the den is a victory. Each time that Lachadima survived another night was a success that none of the other cubs in five years ever achieved. Mother and daughter lived one day at a time. But it was only a temporary respite. Now that the baboons had found them, they would visit this spot regularly, just to make sure. The second den was no longer safe. It was time to move on again. That was nearly three years ago. And yet, as Lachidima looks out across the forest, the distant bark of a baboon still sends shivers across her skin. Somewhere across the forest, her mother is ready to move. Lachidima is aware of every movement. Something is wrong. Leopards usually live under a cloak of invisibility. Her rasping calls at midday are a betrayal of her usual disguise. Even with so much distance between them, Lachidima recognizes the call, a sound that from her birth signified the protective safety of her mother. Today it is still a magnet for her. She must respond. There is a certain conduct among leopards. Approach carefully and discreetly, even if you are a friend, or you will be treated like an enemy. Lachidima bides her time, careful not to give herself away to the forest, but slowly heading north towards the cause, towards a meeting that might change her life. She learned how to be alone very early in life. When she was three months old, Lachidima was already on her own for days at a time. It was a huge risk. At that age, cubs are desperate to see the world, and Lachidima was no exception. The slightest movement nearby of anything, even vaguely her fighting weight, was fair game.
Some prey are not very accommodating. Monitor lizards are quick and dangerous, and her instincts told her to get around behind the hissing dragon. But when some thorns got behind her, her confidence was destroyed. As Lacadema wandered off further and further from where she had been left, she went deeper into the unknown, testing her boundaries but exposing herself to dangers she could not even imagine. had lost two cubs like this before, lost in an impossible maze of fallen trees and thickets or snatched up by some passing opportunist. But this time alone established the style of life Lacadema would have to lead. She was learning to be independent. The calls from her mother had stopped but Lacadema can feel her presence. A distant monkey alarm pinpoints her, the bird suddenly taking flight. A sudden silence, all clues that she doesn't miss. She turns north to intercept her. When she hears the alarm nearby, she knows it can't be her mother. The forest seems to conspire against leopards, and Lachedema is as curious as any to see what the problem is. Monkeys litter the forest. Because of the ideal feeding conditions here, each troop can virtually see their neighbors most of the time. Fights break out, and Lachedema leaves off going to meet her mother to investigate the ruckus. It's worth the distraction. Monkeys have always held a special place in her heart. Her intense interest in monkeys started when she was just a few months old, watching her mother. To catch a monkey is nearly impossible. It is a mind game, a careful calculation of how to get to the taunting little apes. As a young, impressionable cub, Lachadima watched every move her mother made and learned. What makes it such a challenge is that these agile little apes flip lightly from tree to tree, cleverly understanding that the high branches can take their weight but cannot support a leopard. Leopard know their limitations. The cub's keen eyes and pliable mind had watched every move in this three-dimensional chess game. With pawns that can leap from tree to tree, 80 feet up in the air, and a queen wrestling with her next move. This moment she had understood. She was watching this queen solve the puzzle. The key to monkey hunting is to control the high ground, keep them beneath you and out of the flimsy treetops, and to hunt down. From that moment on, she knew it too. Command the high treetops, and you have your monkey.
Leopards have an uncanny ability to visualize an ascent in an instant and mentally plan each foothold before they leap up a thorny tree trunk with a near vertical incline, all while holding a dead weight in their jaws. Lacadema's kill is a good one, the monkey's alpha male. It will throw the troop into disarray for weeks and make them vulnerable. But even though her meal may last a day or two, they will be even more alert now. This knowledge of how to kill and how to survive, handed down from mother to daughter, is a legacy, keeping their bloodline alive from generation to generation. Lacadema is the only surviving cub of this territory, chosen by fate to continue that lineage forward. On her father's side, the burnt ebony male adds his own strong hunting skills and quiet confidence to her genetic mix. His bigger body weight allows for a wider range of hunting than she can manage. But his greatest skill is his ability to clinically analyze the forest with cold calculation. The result is often surprising. When the buffalo stream in from the swamp, burnt ebony doesn't move away, but chooses a parallel course. For a leopard to hunt buffalo would be extremely rare. They're too large and much too risky to take on. But he knows what he's doing. In this part of the world, the dust kicked up by a herd is a flag fluttering its signal to every lion in the area. Burnt Ebony doesn't care, and he holds his course. Usually, leopards bolt at the first sign of a lion. But when he strolls on with little more than a glance over his shoulder, his confidence unnerves the lions. Besides, for them, the air is filled with the scent of a more exciting prey. His eyes miss nothing. His ears scan for the faintest clue. The stage is set. Impossible prey, the area's largest predators, and a chaotic killing field. This is exactly what Burnt Ebony has been waiting for. But he had better beware. The hallmark of a leopard is his sharp mind and instincts cunning stealth and his cold calculation.
His signature is this death grip, silencing his prey in an instant. This way he can kill right under the noses of the hunting lions and within a herd of buffalo without them even knowing he is there. But most of all, he sees confusion as an advantage. Adrenaline-pumped lions can sense that somehow they have missed out on something. But burnt ebony has spirited it away. The slightest smell of blood on the air brings out the piranhas of the bush. But leopards can hoist twice their own body weight vertically up a tree, so the baby buffalo takes little effort. But retreat is not an option for this leopard. He is always ready to turn and confront and growl his warning displeasure. It's sometimes hard for us to appreciate that in this melee of strange-looking animals and incidental interactions, many of these creatures actually know one another intimately. The hyenas can tell him apart from other leopards. Lacodema has inherited some of these traits from her father. But the hyenas and lions here don't treat her with the same respect. It's a lesson she learned early on in life. She was a six-month-old cub then. Mother and daughter were spending all their time together. They were comfortable, perhaps even enjoying each other as they spent hours playing and hunting together. Lachadima was becoming more of a companion to her mother than just a cub. On this day, she was being shown the boundaries of the territory, and everything was new for her. It was her first wet season. Butterflies and flowers danced in front of her eyes, luring her off into the forest, further and further from her mother. Distraction like this can mean the difference between life and death in a place bristling with other predators. Fortunately for leopards, the lions here are too bulky to climb trees. Suddenly, there were lions everywhere, young, energetic lions that don't know their limitations. They are always keen to drag another cat down and rip it to pieces. It is a dark, competitive instinct within them, and that day, they had a real chance of succeeding. But Lacodema has an advantage over them in tree climbing. Unlike lions, leopards have a locking wrist or ankle bone. When lions climb, their ankles slide sideways under their body weight. Even turning around is difficult, and they often end up in an undignified heap at the base of the tree. Caught in a tree with lions camped out between them, Lacodema's mother had no way of knowing if the growls and hisses in the distance was Lacodema in serious trouble or not.
Lachedema's mother decided to risk all to get to her cub. Too much excitement for one day, and the lions barely noticed her discreet exit. Lachedema's alert awareness of the forest has saved her. Together at last, the crisis avoided, mother and daughter release the pent-up tension that staring danger in the face always brings. resumed their play, even more connected by their traumatic adventure, flying through the trees like high-wire acrobats, suspended in a world of their own, way above the dangers that lions and hyenas bring down below. or no lions, this was their time to be together. A time to share each other's elation and each other's pain in a way that only mothers and daughters can ever know. Each day, Lachadima was adding small pieces of knowledge to her arsenal, emotions that would guide her through life. Today, this young female with a unique whisker spot is bushwise. Lachadima knows just how to stay out of reach and one step ahead of the game, and how to express herself in no uncertain terms. Those early games have taught her how to slip up and down trees in a blur of movement and to know her escape routes well. In a place like Mombo, any leopard runs the risk of walking into much larger animals. The predator scent that surrounds her brings out their aggression. Almost everything chases a cat here, especially a small one like Lachadima. <coughs> to survive, she has to know her area inside out, the exact location of every tree and bush to slip behind, to hide or to duck away to safety. She knows each palm thicket, almost every shadow, like a road map for survival imprinted in her mind's eye. A cat that can't find that hollowed out log to retreat to in a moment's crisis will be caught out and attacked.
But this is her world. It is her place of comfort. In trees, she has run up a hundred times or down paths, led only by familiar scents. Her beautifully patterned fur is like a cloak of invisibility. But one creature in the treetops always sees through her disguise. It is a constant irritation. When her eyes stray to squirrels, they know that trouble is coming their way. From her earliest days, Lacadema's destiny would be intertwined with these screeching alarmists high up in the forest. Deep within her soul lurked a lethal killer, but at two weeks old, she couldn't quite get the execution right. The mind was willing, but the legs were simply too short. Within her, though, the quiet seeds of a supreme squirrel huntress were starting to grow. They taunted her for months with a continual stream of insults from above, and she had had enough. Their time had come. She was focused and ready. At three months old, she was agile enough, no longer afraid of heights, and ready to take her small fight to the battlefield. Squirrel hunting is a bit like monkey hunting, but faster. It's like unlocking a series of puzzles all joined together, a game of aerial hide-and-seek. Every nerve in her body danced with the anticipation of her first kill, alive at that moment of death, hungry for her initiation into the world of predators. But at three months old, Lachadima was only nearly ready. She had the heart of a hunter, but not the balance yet. She had the eye of a leopard, but not the best appreciation of her growing hip size behind her. She'd have to wait a while longer for that first kill, but she'd come close and the chase had inflamed her passion for the hunt and the squirrels. Things were about to change. Today, Lachadima is the most deadly squirrel hunter in the entire region. For her, this was never merely practice for larger prey. Her fascination with squirrels has gone way beyond the potential of a furry mouthful of bones. It is a battle of wills, and she has become an expert. These tiny African squirrels have been fleeing for their lives ever since she was a cub. They have almost become an obsession for her. She has figured out how to hunt them down and spares no amount of energy to get to a squirrel. 
Lachadima relishes each morsel she catches. In the past three years, she must have reduced the local squirrel population by at least 300. It is a passion for this leopard. With each kill, her activity unveils her. She hates being seen. All leopards do. When one animal sets off a general alarm, it ripples through the forest, warning all of them. And yet, it is a rare moment to glimpse a ghost out in the open before it disappears into the ether. Some, like the Impala here, seem fascinated by the vision. They sometimes follow, just to keep an eye on her for as long as possible. A leopard you can see is always better than one you can't. Their snorting calls add another layer to the complex network of information that all animals rely on. Lachidima has found a different signal, a sense that, once decoded, she knows belongs to her mother. She came this way recently, but as Lachidima inhales, the message is disturbing. She senses something new within her mother, a change, and a change she may not like. It is piglet season again. She'll interrupt anything for this. Two years ago, she was introduced to the delights of the pig season for the first time while watching her mother. A leopard her mother's size will stay well clear of the big sows. They're aggressive and solidly built. The deep holes in the sand are where the real little treasures are buried. It's not as easy as it looks. If the mothers return, the leopard is in a very vulnerable position. Her mother was expert at this kind of hunting. The strange and unfamiliar meat needed to be tasted to be appreciated, but this harvesting of warthogs registered in her young mind as a very easy way to get the most succulent meal in the bush. And one by one, they were gathered up that day. Lachadima would have to wait nearly three years before she could try it for herself. is too quick. Mistakes may be one way to learn, but they are also a way to die. The furtive dash for the safety of the den is what she'd been waiting for. Now she is back in the game, in a realm she remembers hole hunting. But with the big pigs around, who knows for sure what exactly is down the hole?
Lachadima now has a piglet exactly where she wants it. She knows it, he knows it. Now it's just a matter of time. And she adds her own variation on the theme of hole hunting. In time, somebody's nerve will break. <laughs> It is her first warthog kill, a real hunt, not just the deep hole collecting that her mother taught her, but a running attack. The sows are back. She swiftly uses that internal roadmap to escape effectively. And behind her, she has left enough chaos to open a chance for yet another opportunistic attack. Technically, this is her piglet as well, but Lachadima has to simply watch the injustice and be content with what she has. Warthogs often mount brave rescues of their young, but the jackals killed today only attracts two young males. Their interest may be less heroic than sinister. Warthogs do eat meat sometimes, even injured or dead piglets. Eventually, tension eases, and the forest seems to relax again. It's been another first for Lachedema on her journey from adolescent to adult Lepidus. More and more, she's gaining control of her surroundings, perhaps even learning skills beyond squirrel hunting. And in a moment of elation, she erupts into play. The reaction of a young predator still suspended in time somewhere between killer and cub.